up y'all it's your girl Kay here with a brand new episode of for your future and on today's show we are talking all about internships like how to get one when most of them now are virtual so i called up my friends over at the muse to get us some tips check it out i'm sure there are a lot of students who are just wondering how do i make the most out of my virtual internship so yeah first off what do you think what's like the the one thing folks should know about applying, you know, is that even possible right now? <laughs> Absolutely. There are definitely internships out there and companies, just like they've brought their regular employees remote, they're bringing their internships remote as well. So if you start looking right now at job listings for internships, you're going to see that a lot of the biggest companies are now advertising internships for next summer, just because that's how their programs work. That's how um, their hiring process works, but you'll still see a lot of companies of all sizes advertising internships for the fall and the spring. And in particular, if you're looking for an internship right now, you might want to take a look at smaller companies or startups because they're more likely to hire just based on what their needs are at the moment, as opposed to a bigger company that's got this planned out program and they know how many internships they're hiring at every stage and they plan it out a year in advance. A startup, for example, is more likely going to be like, oh, we need help in the marketing department right now. Let's get an intern right now. So that could be a really great opportunity if you're looking for something. The other thing to think about, too, is that because so many internships are virtual right now, you don't necessarily need to be limited by companies that have offices near your school or near where you're living. You could expand your search to all over the country. So think about that, too, when you're looking for internships. If the internship's going to be virtual for the entire run, you don't have to be there. Um, now, the flip side of that, of course, is that there could be more competition because there could be more people from other parts of the country who have the same idea as you do. But again, you don't really need to be limited by your geography, which is a nice twist now. You know, let's be real. Sometimes you apply, you never hear back. Like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, a lot of people are looking for work right now, not just interns. I would say one thing to keep in mind as you're applying for jobs is think about if it's a remote internship or a virtual internship, think about ways that you can show that you would be good in this kind of role. And what I mean by that is how have you been successful working remotely or working independently in the past? Because remember, in a virtual internship, you're going to be working on your own a lot. So what are projects that you've completed where you've done independent work? Or you know, maybe last spring when your school went all remote, all of a sudden there was some group project that you had to complete totally remote. How were you able to negotiate that and make that happen? So that's one thing. Anything that you can spotlight with your experience about working remotely, working independently, hitting deadlines. If you have experience with any software that, like any collaboration tools like Slack, um, Zoom, which we are all obviously experts on now, uh, Microsoft Teams, anything like that, be sure to include that in the skills section of your resume because it just, anything that you can do to spotlight how you can already bring expertise to this position is great. And then I think one thing that you hear about a ton, obviously, is make sure that your online presence is really locked down. So you're not gonna be interviewing in person. They may do a little extra research on you. So make sure that your LinkedIn is update, super professional, um, and your other social media um, platforms too. I think people get a little freaked out about this and they're like, oh no, like you have to be super professional and robotic on social media or no one's gonna ever hire you. I don't think that's necessarily true. You can, you can be yourself, but I think you should take a hard look at your Instagram, your Twitter, your whatever, and say, would I be comfortable with my boss looking at this? Would I be comfortable with my professor like going deep on my Instagram? Right. Um, and if the answer to that is no, then just take it private for a couple months while you're job searching. You can always, you know, open it back up again. Um, but just think realistically about like, okay, what kind of impression am I putting out there? Mm -hmm. That's so true. Like to keep myself in check, I know that I have my mom on like all my social media. I even have her on my close friends. So I'm like, hmm. Mama Ingram is looking at this, like, is she going to be okay with it or not? And that's like my own like way to make sure like everything is good. Um, Cause it's true. Like companies are looking at that and they want to make sure that, you know, folks that they bring in, like you're representing the company at all times. So 
That's really good. And it doesn't mean that like you can't post a picture of yourself on the beach with your friends. Like that's right. totally fine. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But just, yeah, show your personality, but just think about like, okay, like would I be okay if this went viral? Right. You know, think about it that way. If like the entire world saw it. Um, and, and if that, if the answer to that is yes, then like, you're probably okay. Cool. So one last question, this is one that like just came to top of the mind. Um, and I don't know if you have any advice for this, but any red flags when searching for internships? Because I know that you mentioned, you know, there are some smaller places that are probably right now to some degree desperate, like needing that extra help, but, you know, wanting to make sure that you're protecting yourself, that you're not getting yourself into an internship that maybe is over abusing you or, you know, taking up too much of your time or unpaid internships. I know that's like a huge thing. That's a really great question. I think the most important thing to ask about right now, especially when everything is virtual, is um, ask questions to see how clear they are on what exactly you're going to be doing. Um, as I mentioned before, it's not this kind of thing where they're, you know, they can't just like throw interns random things like when they see you, they have to be a little bit more thoughtful about what exact, what exact project are you going to do? And especially like if you're working 15 hours a week or something like that, if it's limited time, like you wanna make sure that they have thought through what is a project that this intern can work on in 15 hours a week for the next 12 to 15 weeks, that's actually realistic. Um, I think that if they say things like, oh, you're just gonna kind of like hang out and do whatever, like it's not necessarily a red flag like, run, don't, don't do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think you want to ask a lot of follow-up questions to that. Like, well, what are some examples of things that interns have done in the past, for example? Um, and that'll just give you an idea of like, how much do they have their stuff together? And ideally what you want to hear is, well, you're going to be working on these two projects. And by the end of the internship, we expect that you'll have done X, Y, and Z. That's what you really want to hear because that means they, they really understand like what they want to get out of you and they've thought it through. And so if you're not hearing that, then I think you could ask questions like, okay, so what would you expect me to have done by the end of this internship? What does success look like for this internship? And again, just to, just to make sure that they are clear in their heads, because if they're not clear what they want from you, then there's no way that you're going to be able to be clear about what you're supposed to be giving them. Oh, so good. Yes. I love that. That was a really good one. Making sure that you're in an interview, they're asking you questions. Don't be afraid to ask some right back. Exactly. Because it's not just, it can feel like a one-way street where you're like, oh God, I'm on the spot and I'm my, my entire existence is being evaluated right now. But remember that you're evaluating them too. You're trying to see, is this going to be a good place for me to work? Like, do I even like this person that I'm interviewing with? Right? Um, so you need to watch out for things that, that are going to show you that you're going to have a positive or a negative experience. Amazing. I love this. Thank you so much for your help and for these tips. We've had the muse back on now for a second time and I get a feeling it's not going to be the last, <laughs> which I'm really happy about. So thank you for, um, for, for spending time and um, offering those great tips. So Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. This is really fun. I would love to do it again. <laughs>